You're listening to World of Empowerment Radio, your station for practical spirituality in a changing world. And here are your hosts, Angel Rose and Ahanu. You are very welcome. I am Ahanu, and this is my lovely Angel Rose. And we're down by the river Deschutes in Deschutes County in Bend, Oregon. And we're coming to you today because we had a very exciting experience last night. Every month, once a month, we do a sacred earth water experience where people come and participate in the waters that we have collected over time. And many of you will know that we've collected lots of them, uh, over a hundred at this stage, from sacred sites and from caves and from uh, the graves of saints and all kinds of very special places all over the world. And last night we had a particularly interesting experience that we want to bring to you. But first, it's always good to get an idea of where this came from. And Angel Rose gave a beautiful explanation of the origins of our collection of sacred earth waters last night, but we failed to capture it. And I'd like to ask her now to give us a little bit of a history as to where these sacred earth waters came from. All right, Hannah. Well, it was three or four years back when we were on one of our yearly trips to Ireland, and we happened to be staying at a cottage of a client of mine. And we drive into her home, and there in the field is a 5,000-year-old standing stone, just this tall granite stone that uh, was very ancient. And she just pointed it out to us. So uh, anyway, we got settled, and we went to bed. And we were both awoken at 6 a.m. Uh, by this stone calling us out to it. We kept saying, come out here, come out here. So there we were, 6 o'clock in the morning, getting dressed going out to this field where the mist was still on the grass and the sun was barely up and we went out to the standing stone and uh, her, she told me her name was Aria and that she wanted us to make a tincture out of the energy of her stone and she told me how to do it and so we did and that actually started us on a very strange journey that whole summer where we were guided to different places to make mother tinctures of the energy of places and like Ahano said they could be a holy well they could be an ancient hill they could be an underground cave um, all sorts of strange places and so we ended up collecting that summer about 80 and we would just collect them we'd put them under the stairs in a box uh, we didn't really know what to do with them until she told us that she would like us to put them all out on a table together and make sure the jars were touching and that the, they hadn't communicated with, these places had not communicated with each other for many thousands of years uh, because of battles or different things that have compromised the ley lines that connected them. So we put them all uh, next to each other. We sat back and we let them have their conversation. And after that, uh, we were guided to start sampling them. So we'd have just a group of four or five of us that would meet, and we'd uh, pick two or three of the essences, and we'd uh, take some, and then we'd go into a little meditation and be quiet and let it talk to us, basically. Because we found that um, places have memory, and when you make a tincture, the memory of the place comes into the water. And that turned out to be a very profound experience for us because uh, it brought us very deeply into the earth and uh, into what the earth needed, which was uh, transformation. And it explained to us that uh, the earth takes millions of years to process an event that has occurred in a particular place. But the human being, by ingesting some of the energy of a place, can process it through their consciousness and their body and transform it in a matter of minutes. And so the earth was saying that with all the new light that's coming in, it needed help to absorb the light. And this was uh, our way of doing that. Wow, so there you have, there you have the history of how it all began. But I'd like to bring to you now the experience that we had last night of the particular waters. And just remind us, Angel Rose, we did sample several of them, but the first one that we sampled last night 
uh, was Cadbury Hill in England, uh, which is Camelot, Arthur's Camelot. It's actually a very, very large uh, outdoor ring fort where it is believed that that was the original Camelot. And uh, so we have water from that place and that was what we sampled first and that was quite an experience. And then after that we uh, took a water that we gathered from a me megalithic, uh, what would you call it, Ahana? Was it a... Uh, it was Neolithic actually. Neolithic, yes. sorry. A uh, place in Ireland where there were many burial cairns called Carrow Keel. And that was a totally uh, different experience. So I think Ahana is going to report a little bit on what we experienced from drinking those waters. Uh, but since then, uh, like he said, we've collected well over a hundred. We've gone to Scotland and England um, and other areas around Ireland the following year when we went back. And so, in the United States too. We've got Mount Shasta States. and Sedona and various places too. We have too. Mount Shasta, we have Vortexes in Sedona, we have Smith Rock in Oregon, uh, the North Rim of the Grand Canyon, uh, to name a few. So um, onward, right Ahana? Okay, so that brings us to the end of our session today and have a listen to this and we will be back to you with more interesting journeys of consciousness next week. So Cadbury Hill showed me an image of a chalice and a lot of times, you know, when I see these kind of things, I'm almost questioning, what, what, what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to show me? What does that mean? And it looked like the chalice was made up of well, if you just think for a second of, say, a Christian chalice that they might have in mass, you know how there's always these um, gemstones around it, you know, but this one looked like it was so intricately carved that it was made up of women on the left side, up the side of the chalice, you know, like reaching up the side of the chalice, holding the rim. And on the other side, on the right side, there was men. So there was women on one side. This is like in the formation of the chalice and the structure of the chalice. Women holding up one side and men holding up the other side to form this beautiful golden silver chalice with all gemstones and all around it. Beautiful, beautiful thing. And I began to think, well, what, what, so what? Like, what's that got to do with this Cadbury Hill or King Arthur or anything? What's that to do with it? And it looked to me like the, the left side was dark, as if it was in shadow. So it was the female side that was in shadow. It was the women on the left side who were in shadow. And it began to come to me then that that whole idea at the time of King Arthur and the round table was all about equality, was all about integrity and was all about, you know, the other qualities that they were all trying to uphold. I've forgotten a lot of them now, but... Chivalry. Chivalry and all of that, yes. But also, it was a time where, up until then, men and women were equal. And there was also women priests. And it was after that that they started hunting women priests as witches and burnt them at the stake and all of that. So the Catholic Church came into its power after that and started destroying the whole feminine thing. So I could see that this was kind of representing this, that at the time of... King Arthur and Cadbury Hill, there was this balance, but then the female side lost. And the female side lost because the male side of this chalice took advantage of its physical strength. It took advantage of the physical strength over the female and it just came into domination. And it's like we've been at that ever since. Now, I realized then why it was showing me this, that this was all about balance and that in a way, when I looked around and I saw four women and one man, I'm saying, right, like the balance, you know, we have to take care that the balance, it comes back into balance, that it doesn't go the opposite way, tip it over the other side. That's what happens in society, you know, when there's revolt or when there's uh, a pushback, that it can go all the way to the other side. And so your society is constantly in this to and fro. So it's about maintaining the balance and the equanimity and the equality of it all and that that's what the chalice represented and that's what the holy grail represented was the recognition of women being as equally in place and as powerful as men and that everybody was entitled to drink from the chalice of equality and as soon as i said that i'm thinking chalice in wonderland 
and I saw this whole story unfolding about chalice in Wonderland because when it's all equal, that's what happens. It, we kind of enter into a wonderland of the golden age. And that's what it seemed to represent to me. Now, Chalice Well is nearby too. Uh, Chalice Well, that's right. And there is that equal balance between in the Vesica Pisces. And the intersection is like the Holy Grail. It's like the center of everything. It's a wonderful, beautiful balance of it all. In a way, I immediately got that this was some kind of a prediction. Now, we're not into prediction because in a way, you kind of manifest the outcome when you start thinking about it at that level. But still, I just want to report back what I got from it. When I was thinking about the, or seeing the chalice in Wonderland thing, I thought, why is the CH in front of it? And you know the way every country has a country code? Like Great Britain is GB and Ireland is IE and the US is US. And you know, so you have these country codes that have, every country is recognized. And uh, CH is Switzerland. I said, okay, what's this to do with Switzerland? And around the Pope in Rome, the Pope is guarded and protected by the Swiss Guard. Switzerland supposedly is a neutral country. So I was seeing this place of neutrality, of balance. The chalice in Wonderland was this place like a a golden age that we're entering into, that we're coming into now, where the women are equal. And I saw the Pope in Rome allowing women priests, again, like they used to be before they were all persecuted as witches. And that's what the chalice was representing. And that's what King Arthur was effectively setting out to do, was to create this beautiful state of equilibrium and balance and chivalry and honour and all of that. To sum it all up, I thought it was what we were doing here was actually recognising. In fact, I got this thing that said, you know, like in that movie Avatar, it wasn't in Avatar, where the Avatar says, I see you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Isn't it in that? I see you. Yeah. And it's in the seeing it's in the recognition. So it's like this water for me was saying, I see you, I see the chalice, I see what happened. And now that I see you, the focus of attention is now on the resolution of it and the outcome of it and the beautiful balance. So we're drinking of this water, not out of plastic cups, but out of a chalice of equality. This is a beautiful thing. You have been listening to Angel Rose and Ahanu on World of Empowerment Radio, your station for practical spirituality in a changing world.